Awesome. All right. Let's get started. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We're here. I hope you are here to hear about the Community App Catalog, which we launched this morning together with the OpenStack Foundation. So let's, let's get started. First, uh, let's do a little bit of introduction. So my name is Craig Peters. I'm a, well, it says here I'm a father of bicyclists and technologists, which is all true. I'm also a product manager at Marantis. And uh, I'm focused very much on making sure that uh, everybody can consume open source and closed source software in a very uh, smooth way. Um, I'm, you know, I, I, it's really important to me that people have a good experience when they work with their software, and, and that's what I've been working on for a number of years. Christopher, you want to introduce yeah. yourself? I'm Christopher Edo. I uh, do OpenStack things, uh, product architect at uh, Mirantis, and before that I've been in OpenStack since around uh, the, I guess, D release maybe? No. And uh, I do a lot of community stuff, and I'm my focus with this is really to drive right now the community adoption of the uh, app catalog. Perfect. So what are we here to talk about? We're talking about how you adopt uh, get applications onto your OpenStack installation. So, you know, this is something people have been struggling with over the years. So, so how, how do we do it? And, and you know, they, you kind of want to push one of these buttons, right? It's like, well, you know, do you, how do you get the, the workload onto OpenStack? Do you, you know, I, I love the sort of Boromir thing. You know, one does not simply dis deploy OpenStack workloads. It's like there's many steps to making sure you've got your, your workload correctly deployed on OpenStack. And, you know, there's a lot of moving parts, so it's and it's you know the the APIs are complex, so it's uh, it's not always clear exactly what level at which you should do an integration. You can't just sort of forklift them in as one big thing, right? You can't push that second button and you don't just plug it in. And and you know we'd all like to have the transporter to make sure you you push the button and it just appears there. And and essentially with the work we're trying to move towards here, we're trying to get get towards uh, that last that last step. So in order to introduce that, what we've done is we've introduced a central repository where as a community we can all publish common ways of uh, thinking about our applications. So and representing them in ways that are consumable into your cloud. So you know essentially uh, there are a lot of different kinds of assets that represent applications. So if you kind of think from the most basic thing, typically you'll start a virtual machine and you'll use an image to create a virtual machine. And Glance is the service in OpenStack that supports doing that. So the question is, well, how do I get Glance images? Where do I get those from? How do I find those? So Google has been a great tool for all of us. You know, who, who's done that work? Who has used... Uh, tools to create images that are consumable in OpenStack. Well, you know, that, that's not a really scalable way to share information, uh, you know, to, to have it highly distributed uh, throughout the internet. It, the, the concept here is let's get this all in one place, let's find a way to curate that stuff as a community, and then make it really easily consumable into OpenStack. So, the idea is then you've got this central repository. You can either consume it directly into your OpenStack repo if your nodes have uh, access either th directly or through a proxy server into the internet, or uh, you can curate that yourself. So a lot of organizations want a kind of uh, wall around their cloud, and you want to make sure you have control. So you, Essentially, this repo allows you to directly consume them or create a clone of that. You can replicate that inside your firewall and have a, some governance over what images are available inside your organization. And so let's talk a little bit about what actually constitutes the, uh, the catalog. So essentially, at its core, it's a set of uh, definitions of what each of the elements are. There are they're in the YAML format, which just makes it very straightforward for anybody to define a new one. Uh, there's, a, you know, there's a UI that displays that, all that information and just makes it easily, easy to find and consume uh, the, this data. 
and the, the bits are either hosted, like for a glance image, for example, you may want to have direct control of it, uh, and you, know, you may have a CICD system where you want to uh, publish a set of images that you want to share with other people, so you publish those to some URL you're under control of, or uh, if you don't have a CDN and uh, things like that, the, the CICD system for uh, the catalog can also automatically copy them into Rackspace CDN, which is the one that the OpenStack.org organization, the foundation, runs. Um, and essentially all of that content goes through exactly the same uh, curation process that all OpenStack contributions go through, and Chris is going to go through that in, in some more detail in a little bit. Um, but what I wanted to talk about a little bit more is how this is really just the seed of what we can do. So having a bunch of glance images and heat templates and Rhino packages kind of forces us all to think about uh, what it means to be able to share that kind of information. So you know, if you think about what's happened a little bit over the arc of, of, of the IT history, uh, you know, we, we, in the old days, all of IT was centrally located, and everybody... Uh, Just get a drink of water. I'll be back later. Sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the old days, the IT organizations really had all that information kind of centrally located, and everybody could collaborate on how to, to build their systems. And as IT systems got more and more distributed and more and more complex, those organizations specialized in certain processes and skills and tools, and it got very, you know, very dispersed, and even more so once outsourcing kind of took over, right? So it became very hard to even understand what pieces made up uh, IT infrastructure. And then, uh, you know, what's happened over in cloud, essentially, is we've said, well, we've taken all of that kind of dispersed knowledge and uh, things that are run by other people, and we've decided that we, we need to create a common shared definition of what that means, and that's what the cloud kind of represents. It's a, it's a consolidation of all of that knowledge that has been dispersed. And I think what we have here is an opportunity that's represented by OpenStack in general to come to some consensus about uh, co what's common between the way we all want to run our clouds. What are the best practices for specific application use cases? So you know, what's the best way to do CICD for applications that sit on top of OpenStack? What's the best way to do testing and scaling of underlying infrastructure for, for your cloud? And if we can, as a community, come together to define a place to share what the bits and pieces, what are the building blocks of each of those, then we can also start defining some patterns. How do we solve different kinds of problems? And I think that you know, if we do this kind of in the, in the right way, we can uh, make it consumable for a much broader set of people to get on board and understand how to, how to consume and, and take advantage of their clouds. So I'm going to take a minute here to kind of walk through uh, the app catalog. And, um, and what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll just take a look at what's in the catalog today. And um, I want to think about this as a way to hopefully inspire you guys to think about how you can contribute. How can, we, how can you share with other people in this room what you've learned about how to take advantage of OpenStack? So for starters, what we wanted to do was describe the primary ways in which you could consume this stuff. So there are really currently three different kinds of assets. One can imagine there are lots of other kinds of assets we could add to this catalog over time, but we just wanted to create a starting place. So, you know, glance images, as I mentioned, are, are you know, the building block for virtual machines. And, um, you know, at, the, at launch time, essentially, we managed to get participation from a, a number of different folks who wanted to contribute right away. But, you know, this is just the... I have said that over and over again. Just the beginning of what we can do uh, as a community. But the idea is that each one of these uh, images has metadata about it. And so you can see, for example, you know, uh, you know, what it is, what you provide a description. You know, right now, in this initial instance, the description field is you know, it's just a text block. I think in the future we should do things like add the support for formatting and things like that. But it's got a set of metadata attributes uh, that help you kind of 
understand what it is you're getting, right? So you can get to the documentation, you can understand what the hash key is, you can get uh, links to other releases. And that set of metadata is just the first set that we've defined. And what it does is it helps uh, represent some dependencies. So you can define uh, not only uh, glance images, one of the things I forgot to mention when I was in there, let's do that, is uh, that you know, we've tried to create a, new, a few nice little utility ways to make it easier for you to consume these things. So right here, we've just got the command line that you would just copy and paste into your Bash shell uh, to, to download that image right into OpenStack. So it, it makes it super easy to consume. Um, but if we look at Murano packages, Murano uh, is a, you know, it's, it's built as the OpenStack application catalog, but it's really a whole lot more. It is a framework for automating the lifecycle management of applications on OpenStack. And it, packages for Murano represent how does that get exposed in the catalog in OpenStack? How do you deploy it? How do you upgrade it? But even further, it exposes a set of uh, actions which you can take on applications. Like, for example, you could scale up an application, or you could back up an application. And if you want to do that in exactly the same way every single time, uh, that's how you, you represent them in a Murano package. And then you can share that uh, across organizations. And that's what each one of these things represents. There are actually two kinds of things in here. You'll see over here there's packages, and then there are bundles, which is are bundles of additional uh, assets. So these are, uh, in this case, you'll see this is a simple bundle of application servers, and it's got uh, Apache HTTP server and Apache Tomcat. Uh, so it's an easy way to get like whole sets of things. So here's a container-based apps bundle. So you see it's got a bunch of dockerized services that you can bring into your application. So right away, if I download this into uh, Murano, in my cloud, I'll be able to provide to my users self-service deployment of all of these kinds of applications into your cloud. Uh, and so one of the other things that's represented in here that's important to understand are the dependencies. So for example, if I look at uh, Cloud Foundry, you'll notice that the Cloud Foundry, this is a package that allows me to configure and deploy a, cloud, a single node Cloud Foundry open source instance onto my cloud. And it depends upon this Ubuntu image. And this Ubuntu in image also has the Murano agent uh, pre configured on it. So Murano takes advantage of post-deployment actions and, and uses Mur the Murano agent to, to accomplish those actions on the server. So as I, if, you, if you missed the keynote this morning, in Kilo, unfortunately I don't have Kilo running right now so I can't show it, but basically all you have to do is you find the package name and you copy and paste that into Horizon. Or we've also added to the Murano command line the option to download uh, these package by package name, or from a URL, much like Glance. So there's there's a variety of different ways to consume it. So the idea here is that this catalog is just a, a starter, and we can all add to it. So I think uh, we can come back to this after uh, if we have other other questions. But that's the demo that I wanted to share, and I think I want to pass it over to Chris to talk about how you guys all can contribute and make this even more awesome. Thank you, Craig. Excellent. <clears throat> Demo. So I'm going to talk about the kind of the community aspect of it and the, uh, the idea of getting people to share stuff. Um, and the, you know, I figure puppies will make everyone want to share stuff because puppies are cute. And, so <clears throat> and remember, sharing is caring. So to use the catalog, or actually to contribute to the catalog, uh, you've got to make something. And like Craig was talking about, right now the catalog can host glance images, uh, heat templates, and Murano packages. So I'll talk briefly about how to make some of these different things. And I, we will leave a fair amount of time at the end to talk about this more. Um, and then we have a working session tomorrow at 11, same room, I think at 11.30, um, for everyone to talk about it because, like Craig was saying, this is a community thing and it's really meant to be um, something that we all build and grow together. So, um, so actually, show of hands, who here has built a uh, Murano package ever? Not me. Anyone? 
and some people. All There's right. a couple. few people. Um, it's, it's actually not that complicated, and the docs have uh, some, a really, really good walkthrough that steps you right through basically building a really simple Murano package, but hitting on all of the different elements that you would need to use to build something much more complicated. Um, and obviously, these slides will be made available later, so that's why there's a bunch of URLs in them. Um, how about glance images? Who has made a glance image in their day? That seems, yeah, better. Um, <laughs> or more people, anyway, have done that. Uh, so obviously, um, easiest way to do it really is with Disk Image Builder. Um, but there are a bunch of different methods for making glance images. And like Craig was saying, a lot of times when you stand up a cloud, um, one of the first things you want to do is actually launch a VM, and you kind of you might have the Cirrus image, and that's fun for a minute, and then you're like, all right, well, I need more stuff. Um, and right now, really, the only place that I've seen that actually links to more than one image is the OpenStack wiki, and it's just a handful of images, and it's not really updated by anyone very regularly. Um, so this is, uh, as Craig was showing, we already, just today, uh, Suse, um, added an image to the catalog about five minutes after it was announced uh, at the keynote this morning, awesome. which was awesome. I was that sitting was awesome. there. I got an email, and I looked, and it was a code <laughs> review from, oh, sweet. So <laughs> awesome example of kind of how easy, relatively, this is. Uh, one other thing you can do is make a heat template. So there's actually a lot of different uh, good examples out there. The user guide is really good, and there are some people working on the Merlin project which is, uh, would allow you to potentially build heat templates within Horizon in a kind of wizard walkthrough fashion. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And hopefully, it's going to continue to see support and people building on it, because it's, heat templates are cool. And it'd be nice if they were uh, a little bit easier to make. Um, and actually, Merlin uh, has the primitive, primitives to work with Murano as well. So really cool project. Um, so. One of the things that I'm really excited about uh, this is that committing to the catalog, uh, or I mean, sorry, committing to OpenStack is daunting and um, maybe not super easy. So show of hands, who here has, uh, first show of hands, who signed the uh, OpenStack CLA? All right, now, uh, who has committed code and gotten it into OpenStack? All right, so almost the same number of people. There, it will be kind of awesome if, you know, six months from now, we have almost everyone in the room can raise their hand and say, well, yeah, I committed code because it went into the catalog, and I've been through the Garrett process, and I'm totally familiar with it. Um, the great thing is that this is a probably with the least painful way to actually commit code back into OpenStack. And I think getting a lot of people over that hurdle and getting them used to using Garrett and doing reviews and stuff, <laughs> will probably, at least potentially, get a few of those people who have wanted to add an image and gone through the hassle, maybe not hassle, not fair to say, but gone through the, the steps that are required to get to the point where you can, where you can type in git review. Uh, if they've already done that for the sake of adding a few lines to, the, to a, a YAML, uh, there's a great possibility they might actually do a review and start uh, contributing back to OpenStack in even bigger ways. Um, so I put this in there, and actually, it's Probably, uh, for people who have never committed, it looks a little bit confusing. So maybe we'll just skip past it. But it has the URL, and you can learn more about, uh, you know, about the process. Um, and we saw this slide earlier. Craig talked about the contents. Like Basically, it is just a YAML file behind the scenes. Um, so here's the process. It's, it's a few steps, but it's pretty straightforward to actually add something to, uh, to the repository. So you clone the repo. You um, edit your, your image. Oh, two and three are supposed to be backwards. Well, Craig must have changed my slides I did not. earlier. But I'm happy to fix it now. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, real time. Yeah, yeah, that's the way we roll. Thanks. Anytime. Glad to help. So, clone the repo, edit your, uh, edit your thing, add, add the stuff, and the steps are on the, on the uh, wiki. It's pretty straightforward. Um, then you run Tox and run Python simple server just to see if it renders right and, and looks nice, and you can make sure you're happy with how your description reads and, and everything else. 
and then do I get commit and I get review. And after it gets reviewed, it'll get merged or you'll get some comments. And this is what a, um, like the Fedora one, uh, the review looks like. Uh, you can see for a glance image, at least, this is, this is all it takes. So this is you know, the YAML. It's really straightforward, um, really easy to do. And the whole point of, of taking this approach was to lower the barriers to sharing. Um, but still do it in a way that's really consistent with OpenStack and consistent with the community. Um, so I feel like it's pretty good, but I really look forward to um, having a conversation with everyone here today and hopefully having a conversation with um, same people and more tomorrow, uh, like figure out what we should be doing uh, together in the months to come. Uh, so some of the things that we, we've had ideas that we think would be really beneficial um, similar to the way uh, the Kilo uh, Murano is integrated with this and can directly pull things in from the repo, it would be kind of cool if on Glance you could actually search for an image similar to um, something like Docker, where you could actually just go, you know, Glance search Ubuntu 14. How sweet would it be if you actually got a list of a bunch of Ubuntu images that are in the repo, have been reviewed by people and committed back in by, by the community as a whole, and then be able to just type glance pull and have glance get that image straight out of the repo and put it in your local index. I think that would be cool. Be pretty cool if uh, you could do the same kind of search in Horizon with just a, a search panel um, without potentially even having to go out to the catalog to scroll through it and switch back. Um, I, like I was talking about earlier about lowering the barriers, I think it would be great to make um, the becoming an OpenStack committer process less onerous and a little bit easier. Um, and so we're talking and thinking about different ways we can even streamline the process, not really by changing it, by just, but by making it easier to walk people through those steps and get to that point where you can type get review. Um, I think we could probably make a YouTube video or something. Better than that, make a, a magic wizard or something. Excellent. Um, magic wizard. <laughs> And some of the other ideas, like more artifact types and uh, making it a little bit easier to update. So for instance, if you, if you have an image, it would be great if every image included its hash and you were verifying that if you had uh, your own CI CD when you were pulling it in. But for some of the images that are built nightly, like what you'll see from CoreOS or Debian, it'd be nice if there were a really painless way for those images to stay current uh, as indexed in the catalog. So right now, the way the catalog does it is just by linking out to like the, the CoreOS Nightly, for instance. Um, and it, for hash, it says unknown, which kind of sucks because you then you're, you know, you have, it's be nicer if, if that could be updated. So uh, it'd be good to have a conversation with everyone here uh, about some ideas for how we could do that. Um, and then we have that working session tomorrow. So it'll be in this room at 1150. Uh, and that's it for the talking part. So how about some questions and, and thoughts? And, and definitely this is like a, uh, this should be a conversation for everyone in the room, not a, hey, Mirantis guys, what are you going to do with this? Right. Because well, that's one of the other really important things. Um, this is not a Mirantis thing at all. This is something that we did in collaboration with the foundation. Uh, we did it really fast. And the whole point was to get it out there. And this is a purely an OpenStack thing. Um, there's a couple of us who have been working on it who are core reviewers, but it will be treated probably like any other project. So there will be an election cycle, and it's just going to work like every other project. So uh, yeah. So questions or thoughts or feedback? And, and if you can come up to the microphone, since this is being recorded. And then any hard questions, I'm going to point at Craig and just <laughs> pretend that it was his idea. OK. <clears throat> My name is Michele. And uh, the question is, how long did it take to do this, to implement this? And how many people? Hmm. So I think we started this effort three weeks ago in a very lightweight way. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were probably a grand total of four people working on it. I'd say about right, yeah. And then, you know, a lot of that work actually happened in the last week. <laughs> yeah, that is absolutely true. Um, <laughs> we had a, a stepping stone in, in a way where uh, this is very similar to Stackalytics, if any of you have ever seen Stackalytics. It's, so there's some similar components. Um, 
but it, but it was, you know, we put it together pretty fast and uh, some of us, Craig worked a lot of hours, I didn't, but uh, <laughs> take credit for it, certainly. <clears throat> sure. But no, we, <laughs> it, it, was, it was a uh, pretty intense effort to get ready for the summit, um, but it's also, we're all really excited about it, uh, especially like, I, you know, I think everyone who's been in the OpenStack world for a while can appreciate uh, doing something like this that can, that can make, make it a little bit easier for those people who are standing up clouds and for the people who are trying to convince others to deploy OpenStack, this is one more thing that kind of helps and says, look, it's not just some weird esoteric infrastructure as a service thing. There's actually end users can really get right into it and, and deploy an image and I think, yeah. Next. Um, what are the plans to keep the, pro given that you can write a Murano package with Chef, with Puppet or Shell scripts, how do you keep only you know one version? Do we really need something like Puppet has, where they've got 20 different people uploading packages to install the same version of Apache in slightly different ways? I mean, is there a process to have the blessed version like Puppet has now with their supported modules, or is it kind of still a free-for-all? That is a fantastic <coughs> question that we as a community have to decide. I've, uh, that one's kind of worried me. And uh, basically the approach I've been thinking about is that I could come up with a, a suggestion for how we ought to do that, but I decided that it would probably be better that we do that as a discussion with the whole community to talk about how we curate. So there are lots of different ways to do it. So there's the puppet way of doing things, there's the Docker way of doing things, right? With our, or it's just the, the Wild West. Well, it's the Wild West plus of the, their official images, right? right? And so, uh, and there are a bunch of different ways we could do it. So uh, one idea is to have reviewers uh, do things like ratings. So we could sort of let the, have a crowdsourced way of thinking about, well, what are the different things? We could even do it based on use cases. So for this use case, have ratings associated for that use case. There are a lot of different ways we could go and do it. I think tomorrow's working group is really intended to flush out exactly those kinds of questions. And I, you know, I don't think we in any way want to dictate the answer. Yeah. Oh, come on, there have to be other questions or thoughts or feedback. If they're not, that's okay. <laughs> Any other yeah, thoughts? Yeah. Go ahead. And then you'll have to get up. Uh, or I can just repeat your question. Yeah. Um, have you had any pre-study where you compared what you were about to do with the competitors so that you can help us selling Nurano and OpenStack better and easier compared to the competitors? Mm -hmm. So do you mean competitors as other cloud technologies? With uh, like uh, cloud the catalog, stack? our catalog is going to be better than the other, so similar comparison? Mm. So, I don't I'm not sure I really, you know, no is the answer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the idea here wasn't to try to make a catalog that was better than what cloud stack would have or the Amazon marketplace would be. <clears throat> that, that wasn't really the frame of mind at all. It was more about how do we help people in the OpenStack community share practices and processes to get applications onto their clouds, um, and, and how can we do that in a straightforward way that's, that's done in the community in a cu community cu curated way. Um, th the notion that it would be better than one of those other things is what wasn't really in our minds at all. I think that it will become the best possible thing for OpenStack through all of our contribution. That's, that's sort of my point of view. Go yes. I'll say. Yeah, I'll just repeat it. <laughs> Contents. Oh. Okay, so the question is, for, for the sake of the recording, is the, uh, the review process, is it just reviewing the YAML or is it reviewing the contents like of the glance image or of the Murano package and the subsequent stuff that it downloads? It is just for the YAML. So in, in similar to, um, I mean, exactly like Docker or Amazon, an image is shared kind of at your own risk, but the, so, there is some risk there, certainly, of someone uh, uploading something maliciously. But the truth is, it's pretty, I personally think it's really unlikely that we'll see that because 
it, you have to be part of the OpenStack community to do it in the first place. And you, there's certainly the possibility that someone sets up an account just for that and goes through the trouble to create something and, and upload it. Um, but the very first person who, I guess, thinks there's something fishy about it can quickly put in a review, and it gets taken right out of the catalog. Um, but there probably are better ways to do that as well, and especially quicker ways or ways to democratize the review of the contents, which is, uh, leads back towards what some of the things Craig was talking about, like uh, ratings or ways to review them um, and you know, maybe quickly mark an image for, like, this one is questionable, it should be reviewed by, maybe flag something so it can be reviewed by a, a, a different committee of people. Well, another idea that we should discuss tomorrow in the working group is should we do things like uh, include in the CICD infrastructure virus scanning, right? Right. To look for malicious code uh, as, as an example. But, but that's not in the first implementation. And so that, and we, that's a big subject. Yeah, we, we actually did talk about it. And, and I came down on the side of not doing a virus scan. And, and basically, my stance on it, frankly, is that if we look at it, and we say it's OK, oh, yeah, we scanned it. It's, it's cool. No viruses, no backdoors, no nothing. Don't worry about it. Then we're, we're saying, oh, this is good. And if it, we happen to miss something, that's a pretty bad deal. So uh, it's, it's, I mean, it is a, a balance. Um, and I think you can, I don't know. I, I would love to have a longer conversation with people, too, about some different ways we can do it. Um, and I'm also something that I have been itching to write about this on the OpenStack dev mailing list for the last couple of weeks. <laughs> so I'm so excited that we've launched it. Now we can actually have a, a more open conversation about yes. it with people who are not here uh, in Canada with us. Um, Absolutely. Thanks for your question. Bernard. I'm Bernard of CloudBolt Software. And my question is, uh, you may have covered this, but how in-depth uh, and, and uh, complicated can these uh, items be in the catalog? Could it be a multi-VM, multi-tier uh, kind of deployment, uh, you know, with steps other than just deploying the uh, uh, the images? You know, could there be scripts that run in between or afterwards or before well, and yeah. things like that? So that's a Murano thing. I mean, so, so yes, basically, uh, heat templates can be incredibly complicated. So for instance, Triple O stands up OpenStack. There's a lot of stuff involved in that. Um, you can host the, you know, the, the triple O templates uh, from Red Hat. Um, could be in the catalog very easily. Murano can also do the same. Uh, Murano can do some incredibly complicated things. And a bundle can have lots of other sub-dependencies. Um, so you, you can do some pretty crazily, crazily complicated stuff. Yeah, so for example, this morning in the demo, I showed how you can quickly deploy a Kubernetes cluster running. In this case, I just ran an HTTPD, but you, you, know, you could do a very sophisticated application, multi-tier application with HA and all that as a configuration that's bundled as a single item in here or in separate pieces, depending on how you know, people actually consume it. Good. Thanks. Yes. Um, so the question is, well, what kind of considerations do glance image creators, would they have to put in uh, for the catalog? Are you wondering if they... Right. Okay. So yeah, the question is, like, which clouds would it work with if, the, if someone built a glance image specifically for Rackspace or for the HP public cloud? That's actually a great point. Right now, the, the documentation on the wiki doesn't give you a guideline about that, but it should. The guideline should really say for your glance entry, um, note any specific uh, requirements like this. You know, this will run on a, only one specific cloud, or this image relies on I don't know so, uh, something else. That's a good point. Um, so we should add that to the documentation. Maybe file a bug. <laughs> Right. No, that's an excellent point. Um, so format is one of the attributes of the glance images. So if that's sufficient, you know, but that may not be sufficient. I, I, I don't know. We have to look at.
Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's so, so any dependencies built into the image uh, should be definitely noted in the image description. We don't, the, doc, the, you know, the documentation doesn't really suggest that right now. It's a good point. Yep, very good. Other questions? No. All right, all right. Great, well, thank you very thanks much. Thanks so much. Really appreciate you coming. Thanks.